Schizophrenia is a long-term but treatable brain condition. You know, as a family, we didn't know anything about schizophrenia. We, I suspect, I'm not sure we knew how to spell it. At one point, I believed 100% that I was the Messiah sent to save the world. My name is Dr. Fredrickson. I'm a psychiatrist. I treat psychosis-related conditions, including schizophrenia. My name is Gerhardt. I'm the father of four sons, three of whom, it turns out, suffer from schizophrenia. My name is Bryn. I have a form of schizophrenia known as schizoaffective disorder. Schizophrenia is a psychiatric disorder that involves everything from paranoia to catatonia to hallucinations, delusions. One might say that schizophrenia is one's inability to perceive reality accurately. Once people recognize that this is a brain-based illness as opposed to a social issue, a personality problem, a family issue, then appropriate diagnosis and treatment can really begin. The diagnosis I received was uh, just devastating. I was not intent on giving it any uh, thought or grain of truth. Often there's some kind of change in the person's personality and some kind of change in their regular level of functioning. They can include everything from general anxiety, social withdrawal, mood swings, depression. One of the symptoms that I've experienced is a form of auditory hallucinations. The hallucinations usually are running commentary on what I'm doing, like, oh, he's, he's in the kitchen that, and he's cooking dinner. Oh, that means he's Jesus of Nazareth. Another a form of uh, hallucination I've had is visual, and that would be um, best described as as something that you see that isn't actually there, such as aliens descending from outer space, looking for the Messiah, um, and, and monitoring the human species. I am sort of stuck between two worlds, right? So on the one hand, I'm living in the world that we all inhabit and the reality we all agree upon. And then at the same time, there's sort of this parallel thing. It's sort of like tuning into both sides of reality. But what does it mean to a family? It means to a family living with people who don't think logically. It means living with sons who were excelling in academics and sports, and that has all disappeared. And it is, in an extreme case, and in our case, a violent component. It even almost cost me my life one night. Once people can look past the drama, the chaos, the craziness of the illness symptoms, then you can see that at the end of the day, schizophrenia is simply a brain-based illness like any other medical illness, and it needs medical treatment in the same way. Recovery in schizophrenia is a long-term process and really requires a team approach. But especially important in all of this is the family, the family working with this team. And together, they can put together a program that will bring about the most positive results. Recovery is all about striving to attain the ideal and optimal quality of life. I tried all these different forms of therapy, went on and off my medication several times, and that was all out of denial. Recovery in schizophrenia, because it is a brain-based illness, does necessitate medications actually to heal up the brain circuits that are the cause of the illness itself. I really just wanted to find a cure. Even though I 
Intellectually, I knew that there was no cure for schizophrenia. Along the path to my recovery, I've encountered such help from family, friends. I've probably seen over a hundred psychiatric nurses and over 30 psychiatrists, all of whom have gone on to work that extra mile and really help me to realize myself as the whole of who I am. Recovery is there. And for us, this is, uh, this is wonderful news. We don't look at our sons and say, oh, you're only working at Wendy's? Oh, you're only working at the mall? We are very happy that they are on their meds, that they are um, living independently, to live independently is critical because, of course, we as parents will not always be here. Schizophrenia is a chronic relapsing condition. Some people respond very well to medication and psychosocial treatment strategies. Unfortunately, there is a subset of people that don't respond as well even to multiple medication trials and to psychosocial supports. Some people do struggle either chronically or intermittently with basic safety issues as well. This can involve safety to self or safety to others. The third son um, all of a sudden felt very withdrawn. We couldn't communicate with him. He dropped out of university. He would curl up in his bed and not respond to anything. He actually came to the house at the middle of the night, two o'clock in the morning, took the kitchen steak knife and tried to kill me. He thought that I was scheming against him with my mother, his grandmother. I don't want to leave the impression that people with schizophrenia are, are violent. This was pre-treated schizophrenia. Now my son is under treatment. I don't fear. He has never committed a violent act since. And that goes back 14 years. It just so happens that one of the symptoms of schizophrenia is the lack of insight. The person with schizophrenia often does not know that they are ill. Medication treatment can make a significant difference in starting to help the brain circuits heal enough wherein the person can start developing some insight that there is some brain circuit abnormality. The first thing that needs to happen is you need to realize that you have a broken brain. And at, at times, I, I can relate to that anosognosia simply because there's times in my daily life where I'm sort of living on one side of reality and then I'm aware of the other side of reality or has, is sort of caught between two worlds. When you're in that, the throes of, of illness, the throes of psychosis, it's really important to um, be with people you trust. My brother, uh, I, even in the worst times that I've experienced in psychosis, uh, he's always been someone that I trust. Ultimately, that third person's perspective has to override your own uh, intentions or your own thoughts. EPI is a treatment paradigm that recognizes the importance of considering that there may be a biologic brain illness at hand when somebody's behavior changes. What science is showing now is that early recognition of illness and early intervention of medication and non-medication treatments can make a big impact in improving somebody's functioning and quality of life. My experience with stigma has taken many forms, some of them minor, some of them major. Post-diagnosis, I realized that I could suddenly count the number of friends I had on one hand. 
Stigma is a prominent issue in the treatment of schizophrenia. There's what we call self-stigma or the person's own problems with coming to terms of being diagnosed with a chronic long-term medical illness. There's a stigma within the family unit of coming to terms with their loved one has a medical condition that needs long-term treatment. There's often hopes that potentially the diagnosis is wrong and that this may just be a phase, the person might grow out of it, that the medications may need to be very short-term. There's also the stigma in the associated community, the cultural setting, the religious setting the person's in. You can't believe the reaction you get if you say, I have schizophrenia. It is so wide-ranging. My sons are not accepted by others. People think that they are dangerous, that they have double personalities. Unfortunately, we're still in an age where it's not completely acceptable to talk about schizophrenia or a loved one having schizophrenia. There's a lot of lack of knowledge, misunderstanding. It doesn't roll off the tongue as easily as saying, my loved one has a heart condition or diabetes or a seizure disorder. I would love to see the day when my son would go for a job interview and the interviewer would say, uh, oh, I, I see a two-year gap in your resume explain what happened, that the reaction would be the same as if he said, you know, I hurt my back and it's taken me two years to get it in shape. They are shunned. Their friends shun them. An employer will shun them. And, and this comes back to this issue of this is an illness. It's not a crime. But you know, I have to say that education really breaks down stigma. I think if everyone really got the right education, we would have a lot less confuse people. That's why the partnership programs are so important, to have people meet somebody and talk to somebody who has experience with schizophrenia and find out the truth as opposed to what they learn from movies. The partnership program is an education program involving a person with lived experience of schizophrenia a family member with a loved one with schizophrenia, and usually a medical professional or a member of the BC Schizophrenia Society. It is amazing. It is unique. It provides an invaluable service where three individuals come together and explore their understanding of what schizophrenia is. The benefits of this, of course, are one, basic education. What is schizophrenia? Fighting stigma. Like, it's not some spooky this or that. And it is often a vehicle to engage people to the point that they will support us. The amazing thing is that one in 100 worldwide, one in 100 people will experience schizophrenia, regardless of gender, uh, race, uh, poverty, um, economic or social status, it's really an, an anomaly that is consistent throughout the human population. When you bring the learning from the partnership program back into your community and in your personal lives, in your professional lives, it has the potential to create a positive ripple effect, reducing gaps in services and support.